Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Leanna and today we're talking about offers, specifically offers on Poshmark because Poshmark is much more of an offer counter offer sort of platform in my opinion. And you know what? I know that when I list on Poshmark, I always build in room for offers and counter offers in my prices because that's just part of the game there. So I want to go through my decision making process, my thought process when I get offers on Poshmark, what's important to me, what I look at, am I going to accept the offer, decline the offer or counter the offer. So you know what, if it's an individual item, it's one item and they send me an offer, that is much simpler to do the math on and to think through. So if somebody offers me $25 for an item on Poshmark, depending on what it was listed for, you know what, lowball offers are up to your discretion, whatever you feel it will be. For me, a lowball offer depends on the item itself, how long it's been listed. Um, I don't really take into consideration what I paid for the item in the sense of lowball offers, because what I paid is sort of irrelevant. What it's worth is more relevant in that sense. So for me, a lowball offer could be 50% sometimes, could be 30% sometimes, could be 60 or 70, depending on the item. But single, single item offers are easy to figure out. Somebody offers me 25. I'm like, okay, that's a cool enough offer. I've had the item for a while. I decide to accept because I know I'm going to earn $20 and I know I only paid $2 for that item. So I know my profit is going to be about $18, give or take. So it's easier to figure out on single items. And you know what, what you decide to do with that offer is up to you. Like I said, you know what, I don't th see there any harm in declining an offer here or there once in a while, absolutely. If somebody, if I have something listed for $100 and somebody offers me 10, I might counter that one, you know, I might, depending on my mood, I might actually hit decline once in a while. It won't hurt my algorithm. You know, and if I, if I counter and they come up to $11 or $12, I will decline that because I don't play that game. Now it doesn't happen a lot of the time. It's not like it's happening every other offer. So I feel quite comfortable declining because it doesn't happen all the time. I would not be declining every single offer that will hurt your business. Anyway, where it comes into more thought process is bundle offers, especially on Posh, well, on Poshmark because they're very much a bundling kind of thing. And there's a big difference between bundling on Posh Canada and Posh US, mainly because of the weight, because the weight, the heavier weight labels, there's a huge discrepancy in price. So for Canada, Posh Canada, our heaviest weight label actually goes up to five kilograms, which is about 11 pounds and only costs the seller five extra dollars. That's it for 11 pounds on Posh Canada. Fantastic. On Posh US to get 10 pounds, it costs an extra 20 to two, well, can't say it cause it's like flabbergasting, $22 and 50 cents for that label. So that makes a difference when you're looking at bundle offers, you have to really take into consideration the weight. So, one of the reasons that I bring this all up because I had a, I don't want to say situation because it wasn't a negative. It ended up being a very positive thing, but I dealt with something this, this weekend that really made me think about my thought process looking at this bundle offer. So I had a lovely customer bundle. I'm going to say maybe seven or eight pieces to begin with. That was the original uh, bundle. And I forget what the whole price was because, and we'll get to that in a minute, but she sent me an offer. It's a little bit lower than I wanted. I wanted to make a little bit more per piece. So I countered it, but then it turns out that she wanted to add something else. So we had to cancel all that, that offer, whatever she added more. She actually ended up adding eight or nine extra items. The total came to 17 items in this bundle. Wonderful. I was excited. It was like, okay, cool. The total bundle came to $448, which was my list price. Like I said, I list higher for building in wiggle room for offers. So I was like, okay, that's 448. Let's see where we're at here. She sent me an offer for $200. Okay. So $200 would only earn me $160 on Posh Canada or Posh. It, this all happened on Posh Canada. 
<coughs> which means per item I would only be earning $9.41, which is not great because if we do an average cost of goods of $5, which is pretty average for me, um, that means I would only be making $4.41 per item. For me, that's not enough. It's just not quite there yet. So I hemmed and hawed and actually I really need to get faster on my thought process because I think you really should be countering, offering and countering pretty quickly, you know, get that going, that flow going. But I did take my time on this and I came back at, I think I came back originally at $300, which I thought was fairly reasonable. And she came up to 210 and I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's it's not a big enough jump for me we ended up being really far apart um my last my lowest offer i was willing to accept was 270 dollars that would mean that i would have earned 216 dollars on these items which would be 12 dollars and 71 cents a piece which at a five dollar cost of goods average would be seven dollars and 71 cents profit profit with before i take into account um, um, shipping and all that kind of stuff, but in general, a, a gross profit of seven seventy one, which is a big difference than from four dollars and forty one cents to the seven seventy one. Her last offer was two hundred and twenty dollars, which would have been one hundred and seventy six dollars earned. <coughs> pardon me. Which would have been ten dollars and thirty five cents a piece. Not horrible. Like I'm I am not upset with this person and their offering or anything like that. I, I was fine, I was working with them, it was great. That would have been about five dollars and thirty five cents profit per piece. And this is where more of the thought process comes in because I was looking at all the items that she put into the bundle and sort of categorizing them like okay this is new with tags that's new with tags this is a new listing this one you know i paid six dollars for this one was a bins pickup these are older listings and then i got looking at it and going this is going to weigh a lot this i'll be lucky this weighs the 11 pounds to send it with the heavier weight label of five extra dollars because as a seller i have to be very aware how much more money I have to put into this. So I was like, that's just, it's not enough profit in there for me to add a heavier weight or even to have to go to the bother of separating them so that I could do two shipments because of the, the weight limitations on Poshmark. Now, if this was on Posh US and I would have had to pay the $22.50, I would have out and out declined the $220 offer because you know what, there's just not enough there's not enough wiggle room there for me. There's not enough profit there for me to have to buy the heavier weight label, send it to my cross border shipper, which would have been at an extra fee and everything else. But on Posh Canada, I was like, I don't know. So I went to my lowest, which was 270. That's fine. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, we went back and forth, and like I said earlier, I would have really preferred for me to be more on the ball. Something I need to work on is to be doing the math and figuring it out a lot sooner than I was doing with this customer. I didn't. I don't think it was right for me to make this make her wait. I think I should have been a little more, and that way we probably could have come to something a lot quicker than we did, which I think would have reassured the, the buyer. That's my take on it. Something that I want to work on is being more responsive in a quicker manner. So, <coughs> excuse me. You know, I was going through all these things with this with this bundle because it would have been a nice sale. And I mean, having a $200 sale is fantastic for my business in that sense. But when you get down to it, it wouldn't have been all that much more profit. So from what I, what I countered my lowest to what she gave her highest, there was a $40 difference, which you know what, it's $40. And I was just, I was just happier being where I was. I, w I wanted the 270. That was where my bottom line was. I made that decision as a business owner. I did look at the items thinking, okay, how much attention have they had? Will they sell anyway over the course of the next couple of months? <coughs> Excuse me. Or am I going to sit back in three months going, None of this stuff is sold. I should have taken that offer. 
you know what, maybe I might, you know what, that's the risk I'm taking right now, but I am very confident that I could actually get these things sold and make my, you know, 771 profit per each item. So I'm confident in that, but I do run that risk. Um, it ended up being that with my last offer, you know, that's fine. What she did is she rebundled things together. She decided what she really wanted. She did a bundle of seven items. I think the original price came to 190, something like that. And she offered me a hundred dollars. And I honestly took a minute to think about it, but I figured out I would have earned $80 for that, which ended up being $11.43 a piece in earnings. So that gives me about $6.43. I know not a huge difference, but it's a little over a dollar more. So you know what? I actually took that offer. I was happy with that offer. I'm going to send those items out later today. I'm going to package them up. Um, they're not going to weigh heavier than even the first label, so I won't have to buy any other labels. But again, it's different on Canada. We don't pay a lot more for our heavier weight labels. It's easier for us to incorporate those prices into our sort of prices or into our profits and losses and stuff like that. On Posh US, it's a little more difficult because those are expensive prices for that. So you know what? As much as I would have loved to sell a huge bundle, to get those sales as a business owner right now, I want to earn more profit. And I think that's a good sort of rule of thumb, especially when you have newer items that are just listed. It's like, you know what? Yeah, I could let it go. It could be a quick flip. And sometimes that is good and fine. But sometimes it's like, no, I know that I'm going to earn $10 more on that item and I'm going to stick around and sort of do that because once all the listing is done and the photographs are done and the prep is done the work involved in actually getting that item out there is very minimal so even though you're still kind of spending money getting that item seen it's not like all the hard work's already done all the heavy lifting's done so waiting around for a little while to get more profit I think is fine Anyway, that was my sort of story for the weekend, and it made me think about my thought process with offers, and I really want to get better at being more responsive. Quicker responses, I think, give me a better reputation on the platform, and I think it would be better for the buyers. I think they would be having more confidence in me as a seller if I was quicker with responding. So... My throat, I don't know. It's one of those days. It's going to be a nice day out. I'm going to go mow my lawns because they need it so desperately. Anyway, that is it for today. I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Um, don't forget, May 15th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do have a Posh and Learn. There's an Eventbrite uh, link down below if you want to RSVP to that. It's for beginners, but you know what? Anybody can come and join and talk. Or I will talk. You'll be in chat. It's a Zoom call. You don't have to be on Zoom. Only I will be. But anyway, it's the links down below. <laughs> have a good week, everyone. Bye.